Hello and welcome to these special series of videos to mark our Car Dealer Power Awards 2022. Now these awards aim to celebrate the very best motor trade suppliers and the best car manufacturers to represent in the UK. These awards are the only ones voted for by car dealers and given the motor trade the chance to have their say. Now car dealers up and down the country have been doing just that and they've been telling us who is the best match manufacturer to represent and for the third year running Kia has taken the top spot. To discuss this with me uh, this year is Wayland's Automotive CEO, John O'Hanlon. Uh, Wayland's operates two Kia franchises alongside its Volvo and MG dealerships. John, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, very nice to see you. Um, we're we're going to chat about a few things today, but firstly, let's kick off with, with, with that Kia win in the mm. Car Dealer Power survey. Why, why do you think Kia is so good to represent? I think it's I think it's a combination of factors, James. Um, you know, you go right back to what the values of the brand are, and we talk about sustainability, we talk about safety and comfort, and I think the world's coming to them. Um, you look at some of the product um, and the positioning of that product in terms of its premium nature, in terms of electrification, and you just look at the awards that EV6 has won, um, we've got the, the Sorento, we've got the Sportage, we've got the new, all new e Nero and Nero, you know, cars that are really performing in their sectors. And we know there's more to come. We've got the EV4, we've got the EV9 next year. And I think that's really being, you know, I guess you take away everything else and you see the amount of cars that we're selling. Um, it does feel like Kia will do um, six figures this year. If you go to the end of August, um, the, the, the leaders are Ford and Volkswagen at 7.5, at 7.4% market share. Um, Kia's just under 7% market share. Really, really performing. It's up 19% in a market that, that's down. Um, so I think if you look at our product, you look at our performance, um, and then you look at the leadership, and that's, you know, I'd, I'd single out Paul Philpo, uh, Simon Hetherington, who have both been there for 15 years, and they give consistent transparent um you know messaging to tell us what's going to happen to tell us how we're going to do it and then they deliver on it so i think if you put all those factors together um i think you've got a really really powerful and potent um combination uh, and that's why i guess they're picking up the the, the car uh, dealer power award for the third year so I'm just looking at the results here for, for Kia this year. They scored 90.8% in, in our survey. They were just ahead of Hyundai and Suzuki. They, they scored top marks in, uh, we, we score them in 13 different categories. So the dealers rate them in 13 different categories and we take the average to work out that top score. But they scored the top marks in the survey in the finance, warranty, brand awareness, internet, forward planning, bonus and return on investment sections of that survey. Do, do they all make sense to you? I mean, I, I'm afraid to just keep banging that drum, but they do. And if you've got a happy network, then generally you'll get the scores that you're seeing. They get more things right than wrong. Um, the return is there and it's on the back of some very consistent, some very clear, some very transparent uh, ways to market. We know we've got investments to make, um, but again, those investments are clear. You could choose when you've got the timing to do it, and they're reasonable um, in terms of the level of investment. So I think you know we it feels um, that the brand is in good shape, and that's reflected in the responses that you're getting from the dealers and the network. Let's talk about your wider business for, for a moment. Mm. How are things? Has it, has it got tougher as this year has gone on? Well, I, 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 we had a fantastic Q1, um, it's fair to say, um, and even H1 stood up. Um, so if we look at our numbers, you know, like for like, we're up 15% year on year um, against the backdrop of you know you're seeing some of the the bigger groups actually going back that sort of 10% in terms of the results, but. It has been tougher, and I don't think that's a shock, James. Um, you know, I thought we'd been through some of the hardest times, but it's just been um, a wave of, you know, wave after wave of bad news, you know, whether it's war, inflation, cost of living, fuel prices. Um, I think there's there's been so many challenges, and that all affects our consumer confidence, um, and then you overlay that against um, some shortage 
of new car supply that's continued um, and there's been more bumps there. Um, it's been tough and we can feel that. We can feel that in our inquiry rates. Um, you know, I think Auto Trader published the 40% off and new, 37% off and used. We are not quite there, but it's much harder. It is much harder. Um, and the market. Uh, so yeah, every every single lead, we're just funnily enough, we're just doing a um an event for our customers. And the response has been good. Um, but it is much tougher when you don't have a car to put them straight into. You know, we are having to pivot and do those um the sell into forward orders. I mean, the, the difficult thing at the moment is those. There, there's a lot of customers in there out there on on PCPs who've got re, who are returning into dealerships, and I, I know just incidentally of friends and family who have kind of nearing the end of those PCPs mm. haven't haven't done anything about it, just sort of expected that they're going to be able to walk into a dealership and and get another new car. I mean, they're going to certainly going to have a shock to the system. I'll try to advise them otherwise. But I, are you are you struggling with these sorts of customers, and are you having to contact them earlier in their their cycle think, and say, hang on a minute, uh, you need to order now. And I think if you look at our communication, our communication has been um, more consistent in terms of get to us earlier. And I think there's more of an understanding that there is, you can't just walk in, there won't be stock on the ground. You know, we have very limited numbers of all our brand stock available for delivery in September. Um, Q4 looks like it's improving, but it's towards the end of Q4. Um, so yeah, we're having to reach out to our customers. So whenever we are uh, writing to our customers, we're making um, we're making it known that there's not as much stock on the ground and trying to encourage them to place the orders. But we have trained our customers in a certain way. And I think we've just got to be, you know, really cognizant of the fact that we have a, we've encouraged them to come in to the dealerships and to almost take away a stock car, our best deals are on the on the stock cars, and we just don't have the stock cars on the ground. So um, I think we are looking at what can we maximise on. So that again is the refocus roundabout used. Um, we've still got um, you know plenty of used stock available. Work really hard to make sure we've got the right cars on the ground, and also on our after sales. If you're going to have to keep that car longer, let's make sure you keep it in our workshops and not anywhere else. What about electric cars? I mean, you've got Volvo, MG, Kia in the portfolio, all, all very strong with their, their electric vehicles. Yeah. I mean, with energy prices at the moment, I and mean, we're hearing mm. hearing anecdotally that actually customers are, again, a little bit put off electric cars by the by the rise in energy prices. Are you having different conversations with customers now? Are you And, and are you actually seeing any evidence of that in the showroom? I think, I think, first of all, there is a reason why we've chosen the brands we've chosen. And that is about having that fantastic electric offering going forward. Um, you know, I'm, I am really aware that customers are willing to consider other brands um, that they may never have considered before. And I think that really shows, that's probably one of the reasons why Kia is coming through so strongly. And MG, with the fact you've got an electric offering, a compelling electric offering round about the price. Um, so I think in terms of where we are, we're well-placed. I'm looking forward to seeing um, some announcements from Volvo, funnily enough, later today in terms of their new product, um, which I think is really exciting. So in terms of electric, um, it is arriving. Uh, we can only sell what the what the what the factories make. So we will, um, you know, every dealer will sell more and more electric cars. And I think we've got as a moment in time. Um, I think a little bit of um, the the strong message on energy got a little bit uh, lost, and you know the the sad news that we've we've faced over the last ten days. So. I think once we start talking about that, and that should help the customer have more certainty for the next two years, it will certainly help businesses. So hopefully we can get back to actually talking about all the reasons. And you're absolutely right. Um, the price uh, has suddenly come back towards the top of consideration. But there's lots of other reasons for buying an electric car as well. And we've just got to make sure that we're explaining um, and making that that having that proper discussion with our with the customers on the way through. And you've you've mentioned used cars there. It's a big topic of uh, conversation uh, at Cardian Magazine. Are you, are you seeing demand soften a, a little? And and what are your thoughts when it when it comes to prices? What do you think is going to happen to, to used car prices? Um, I, I wouldn't be sitting here, James, if I, if I knew the answer to that question. Um, 
I think uh, the fact that new car has supply has been so strangled has allowed used cars to uh, pricing to remain robust um, despite the fall in demand and there has been a fall in demand um you know we can see we can see that we can feel it um you know we're we we try to deliver fantastic cars at the right prices um we don't we, we we're not we're not trying to go for every last car um so i think the fact that we have a stable market a consistent market plays to our strengths um you know we've reduced our total volumes uh, but kept stock turn going, which has been really important. Uh, we worked really hard at making sure that we don't have um, any aged cars around. So go back to some of the, 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 the principles and the policies that worked really um, well for us that actually we moved away from for all the right reasons. When you simply couldn't get stock, there was no point um, selling a car for less margin. We're now actually getting back to a point where we understand that we've got to keep stock turn going, which probably means a little bit less margin um, on the way through. And of course, we're looking at a slightly different mix uh, on the front. We don't have the supply of the, the, the one to three year old cars that we dominated on. So we're having to look a little bit outside of where we normally stock those cars from and even the agent of the cars that we're looking at. So yes, um, it is tougher, but I think when a customer has got to make a change, then we've got to have a solution for them. And part of the new car issue could be an opportunity for your used car. There's a lot of announcements around at the moment uh, from the government about helping in, in a number of different ways to, to boost the economy. Um, there, there's clearly that drop in demand. There's the, there's the energy price crisis. There's fuel prices that, that are causing problems for consumers. There's, there's a lot of headwinds there, isn't there, at the mm -hmm. moment? Do you think we're heading towards a recession? And if we are, how do you think the car market would be affected? I think we are heading for a recession. Um, and I'm not really sure, you know, it's, I'm not really sure there's a lot we can do um around it as you know on a, on a on a macro level so we've got to actually make sure our businesses are best placed um we've got to make sure that we've got the resources that we require that rather than the resources that we've had and every business will have to review that um separately um and i think that's been right on top of everything that you're doing um i've you know, we're spending a lot of time looking at how we market to our customers, making sure that we're absolutely sending the right messages, uh, making sure those customers are aware of what product that we've got. Um, and I guess there's been that certain element where we've been able to sustain the business on lower volumes, but with stronger margins. And that margin might be the little bit that comes off. So rather than, you know, uh, I didn't actually finish up the answer to your questions in terms of pricing, did I? I don't see it. I, I don't see that um, a huge drop. Um, what we've seen is a return to more normal levels of business, even though it's still stronger. But I think that's because the new car supply has been strangled. So as long as that new car remains strangled, then we've got a level of consistency and stability uh, on the used cars. So we've just got to make sure that we are in good shape. We are tight and bright round about your stocks and all those basics that we talk about um, that you might have got away with. You might have actually got away with over the last sort of 12, 18 months. You can't have, your pictures have got to be great. Your price has got to be on the mark. Your um, inquiry management has got to be fantastic. You, whether it's online, offline, you know, suddenly that omni-channel approach has got to be great because customers expect a response and we need to be right on it on a very, very timely basis. Um, and that's all the parts we've been working really hard on over the last sort of um, three, four months. You know, the group has experienced a huge amount of growth. Um, again, this year, we were brought on another um, two sides and the Whale and Z opportunity. So I think you've got an awful lot going on. Um, but we're trying to make sure that oh that that we stick to the netting and everything's beautiful for a customer, however they arrive to us. And what are your thoughts on on agency sales? They're they're clearly on their way. Uh, um, some manufacturers have shown their hand, some haven't. I mean, what, what what are your thoughts on it? Is it is it a good thing for car dealers? Um, I am incredibly, and I know this is not the answer you want. I'm incredibly open minded uh, around about it. 
I really don't mind how I am rewarded as long as I'm rewarded uh, for my performance and for the great job that my teams do in and around uh, our, biz uh, our business and our, uh, our area. Um, and as long as I'm rewarded sufficiently, I don't mind. Um, we know that um, a couple of our brands have been really clear. Um, they're going to stick to what they do uh, and they're going to continue on what they do. Another of our brand is leading the charge um, and really wants to move towards um, that omnichannel uh, agency, quasi agency approach. And that is going to be really interesting to watch um, because if you could be the first and you make it work, you could have a leap, you could be ahead of the, the competition, um, but there are risks. And that's the part, I guess, it's, it's on every retailer just to remind our brand partners, um, if they're going to make that leap, what those risks are. And John, have you got a motto for, for business success? Have you got a bit of a business mantra? Uh, uh, I, you know, I was brought up um, on hard work and respect. And I think that doesn't change. There's no, there's no easy wins. Um, we just got to keep doing what we do and we do it every day. We try to do it as best we can. There's always bumps, but if we've got respect of our teams, we've got respect of our customers, we've got respect of the manufacturer, then actually we will get through it. We're a remarkably robust lot. We're, we've seen off some challenges and there's more to come. And that is the part where I hope that if we continue to do what we do, continue to do it well, then we'll get the rewards for that. And we've mentioned agency sales there, and you've touched on some changes that you think is going to come. I mean, what do you think the, the, the biggest change is coming down the road for, for car dealers? Um, I, I think we're getting used to the fact that electrification is coming and the impact that that will have around our businesses. Um, you know, we, we know autonomous is somewhere in the future. More cars will have more of that ability. Um, subscription seems to be coming and going. Um, nobody's really made it stick. So I think it's agency and the each manufacturer looking and actually see if it works for their business. For some businesses, it won't work. Other businesses, it may work. So I think that's the one that's taking up more of my time at the moment and just making sure that we're all aware um, what we're doing and making sure that we're going to get what we're hoping for uh, on the way through. And John, what's, what's next for your business? <laughs> um, I think a period of consolidation, James. Um, you know, we've grown not only a um, number of sites that we're out, we're now up to nine sites, um, but we've also um, grown with different brands. So we've gone from being Solus Volvo to having MG and Kia, uh, and more laterally with the, the Whale and Z uh, franchise. So we've got a lot going on. We've just got to make that beautiful, especially at the moment. John, huge thank you for joining us today and uh, chatting about Kia's win and, and your wider business. I really appreciate it. No thank topic. You. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Me. Okay, that's uh, John O'Hanlon from Wayland's Automotive there. For more car dealer live interviews like this one, you can check out our YouTube channel. And to find out all the other winners of Car Dealer Bauer 2022, log on to cardealermagazine.co.uk and click on the Power tab at the top of the page. I'll join you next time. Thanks ever so much for joining me. Goodbye.